Boys and girls, this is Mr. Manise here again with another super cool video. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to work each of the problems on the graphing rational functions quiz review. My disclaimer, as always, I need you guys to work these problems on your own and then come to the video and see where you might have any questions or misunderstandings. So, guys, this is a this is a beast of a lesson. There's a lot of stuff in here. Each individual concept is not that bad, but when you put it all together, there's just a ton of stuff that you got to know and uh, know how to work. And, and I'm just here to tell you guys, I say it all the time in class, but I'm going to say it again on this video. Guys, if you can get through lessons like this where there's just a ton of stuff where one problem might take you 10 minutes to solve, there are companies lining up at the door that want to hire you guys. And the chances of you doing these particular types of problems in your job is, is pretty low, but you're building all these critical thinking skills. We're building off of so many things that we've already learned. And if you can navigate through these problems and, and work through the, the types of of reasoning skills and processing skills that your brain goes through to work these problems, that's going to be such an asset for you and your company. So enough on that. Let's go ahead and jump right in. So number one here, they're asking us for the X and the Y intercepts. So for the X intercept, I'm basically setting Y equal to zero. And for my Y intercept, it's the reverse. I'm setting X equal to zero. Okay, so we just take these one at a time. For my x-intercept, I'm basically setting this. I'm setting this guy f of uh, f of zero. Okay, I want to know what this is zero. And basically, like I taught you guys in class, really all you have to do is you just have to set your numerator equal to zero because if I multiply both sides of the equation by x minus two, I'll just do this on a separate sheet of paper real quick so you can see x squared plus 3x over x minus 2, if I set that equal to zero, I can multiply both sides of the equation by x minus 2. And guess what happens? X minus 2, X minus 2 cancel, and 0 times anything, times anything is just 0. So basically, that's why we say all you really have to do is just set the, denom uh, set the numerator equal to 0. So let's go ahead and do that. So I've got X squared plus 3X is equal to 0. Okay, so I solve that. That's a GCF, so I'm going to pull out an X. That will leave me with X plus 3. So set each one of those equal to 0. One of them is going to be 0. And then if I set x plus 3 equals 0, I just flip the sign. So I get x is 0, and I get negative 3. Okay, but those are not my actual x-intercepts. Remember, an x-intercept and a y-intercept is a coordinate point, x comma y. So I'm going to take this first guy here. If the x-coordinate is 0, the y is 0. Okay, so one of my coordinate points is 0 comma 0, the x for the 0 and the y that we set equal to 0. My other x-intercept is going to be the negative 3. I'll put a little colon negative 3 comma y of 0. Okay, so those are going to be my x-intercepts. Okay, for my y-intercept, I'm going to do the reverse. I'm going to set x equals 0. So I literally just stick in a 0 everywhere I see an x. So on top, I'll have 0 squared plus 3 times 0 over 0 minus 2. 0 plus 0 is just 0, and 0 over anything. Now, this is not undefined because there's a negative 2 in the bottom, but 0 over anything is just 0. Okay, so my y-intercept, we're letting x be 0, so it's going to be 0, comma, and then whatever we got for the output, which in this case was another 0. So my y-intercept is, is 0, comma, 0, which is the origin. Okay, number 2, I'm going to set the numerator equal to 0. Hmm, 9 equals 0. Okay, so if there's no variable in the numerator, you don't have an x-intercept. Okay, so I'm just going to say none, no x-intercept. Oops, sorry none okay and then for my y-intercept I'm gonna plug in a 0 for x so I have 0 squared minus 121 on the bottom this is gonna be 9 over that so that's just negative 9 over 121 and that comes out to be a very very small decimal negative 0 0.07 okay so my y-intercept is gonna be we stuck in a 0 for x so it's gonna be x and then this really small number, number negative 0 0.07. And by the way, guys, can you check these? Uh, yeah, yeah, you can. That's why I love math. I love advanced algebra. Let me check all this stuff. I'm not going to check all these for the sake of time on the video, but let's go ahead and type this into our calculator, 9 divided by. Make sure when you have more than one term, guys, that you put that stuff in parentheses. 9 divided by, get out of the light. 9 divided by parentheses x squared minus 121. Okay, let's graph that. First of all, we can just look at a visual. 
Okay, this one doesn't give us much, okay, because there is a graph there, but sometimes you, your calculator is kind of hard to graph. But what if I go to what if I go to second table? Let's look in our table, okay. If I want the y-intercept, that's where x is zero. If I want the x-intercept, that's where y is zero, okay. So when x is zero, we get this negative point zero seven, which I just I just rounded here, okay. So there's our negative zero point seven. Okay, so no, um, I'll, I'll just talk about that. I'll talk about that later. Okay, so that's number two. Number three, okay, let's go for our x intercept first. And that's basically we're just setting this numerator equals zero. So we get x cubed minus 4x equals zero. Let my webcam adjust here. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to pull out a GCF of x. That's going to be x squared. It's going to leave me with x squared minus 4. Okay, can't stop there. I can still factor that. That's the difference of squares. That's going to be x plus 2, x minus 2. And guys, that's why we learned all that stuff, solving quadratics and these special cases. And that's why we learned all that stuff at the time. Maybe you didn't see the big picture, why we learned all this stuff in geometry and why we re refreshed our memory in advanced algebra. But you can see we're building off of so many concepts and standards that we've already learned. Okay, so I've got three different zeros. And those zeros are going to be, if I set x equal to 0, and that's literally 0. And then, of course, I just flip these two signs. So i got negative 2 and 2. But remember, my x-intercept is a coordinate point. So it's going to be 0, comma, 0, negative 2, comma, 0, and 2, comma, 0. Okay, so those are my three x-intercepts. Okay, for the y-intercept, I'm going to stick in a 0 everywhere I see an x. So that's going to be 0 cubed minus 4 times 0 over 0 squared plus 2. Once again, I have zero in the numerator, so that means that's going to give me a zero, a zero. So my y-intercept is zero comma zero. Okay. If I go back to my table on this one, I just want to show you guys this real quick. Okay. Parentheses x raised to the third minus four x parentheses divided by parentheses x squared plus two. And let's go. Make sure I type that in right. Second table. Okay, so let's go back to zero. Okay, so now I got some zeros here. So here's where I'm saying you can use your table. Okay, my y-intercept is where x is zero. Okay, so that's zero comma zero. That's what we got for the y-intercept. And then my x-intercept is are where the points where y is zero. There's a zero and, and there's another zero. So there's my negative two comma zero and there's my two comma zero. In addition to the zero comma zero is both an x-intercept and a y-intercept. So there you can see our, our points there. So remember, you can use your calculator, and the calculator is our friend. Okay, let's keep going. So the next ones they're asking for vertical, horizontal, and any slant asymptotes, and any possible holes in the graph. Okay, so this is where we get into the top-heavy, bottom-heavy, synthetic division, long division for slant asymptotes. The first one, the vertical asymptotes, I want you to think EVs, okay? So those are our excluded values. And if you remember when we learned how to solve rational equations, our excluded values were the values that gave us a zero in the denominator, which means the function is undefined. I can't divide anything by zero. So that basically means I'm going to see where is x zero in the denominator. If I go ahead and factor this, and this is just me personally, Mr. Meese, I like to go, go ahead and just factor everything first if I can see that I can easily factor something. That way it kind of helps me see, okay, here are my asymptotes, here are my uh, you know, critical points, if you will. So on top, I can factor this as x plus 5 times x minus 1. And then on the bottom, factors of 20 that add to positive 9, that's 4 and 5. So there'll be another x plus 5 and then an x plus 4. Okay, so right away I can see that the, the two factors is a factor on top and on bottom, x plus 5 on top, x plus 5 on the bottom. And if that occurs, that means I have a hole. Okay, so I will definitely have a hole in this graph. I'll talk more about that in a second. Okay, so your vertical asymptotes are where the denominator is 0. So I just need to flip these signs because remember we're setting this equal to 0. So flip that sign and flip that sign. If you guys write negative 5 and negative 4, I will have to crumble your paper up. Okay, remember a vertical asymptote is the equation of a line. Okay, it's some imaginary vertical line that our graph approaches it never touches. So it's an actual, actual line. So it's x 
equals negative 5, and it's, I'll put a little colon, and x equals negative 4, okay? Actually, actually, let me back up. Let me back up. I just caught myself. I just caught myself. Almost made that mistake. I have a hole in the graph, guys. I just caught myself. If you have a hole, okay, that is not a vertical asymptote, okay? If you have a hole, that it, it, you can treat it like an asymptote for the purposes of increasing, decreasing intervals, range, domain, those kinds of things, but it's not an actual true asymptote, okay? The x minus, the x plus 5, when I flip the sign, that's going to be my hole, okay? So x equals negative 5, all right? And I'll, I'll graph that in just a second so we can see it. All right, so you don't have an asymptote at the whole. All right, horizontal asymptote. This is our bottom heavy, top heavy, and we're looking at the highest coefficients in front of the highest degree term. I have an x squared and an x squared. The coefficients are 1 over 1. Okay, so that's 1, but your horizontal asymptote is a horizontal line that the graph never touches and approaches. So that's always going to be y equals. In this case, it's just y equals 1 over 1 or, or y equals 1. Vertical asymptotes are always x equals. So if I just draw a little graph out here. Vertical asymptotes are crossing the x-axis, so it's x equals. Horizontal asymptotes or horizontal, they cross the y-axis, so it's going to be y equals. Okay, for the slant asymptote, I only have a slant asymptote when I am top heavy by 1. So if this were a 3, a cube over a square or a 4 over 3, then I have a slant asymptote. In this case, I don't have that. Okay, I just have, I'll put in parentheses here, n equals m. Okay, so when that occurs, you have a horizontal asymptote. And, and by the way, remember, you can never have a horizontal asymptote and a slant asymptote. You might have neither, but you can only have one, one or the other. Okay, so let's talk about this hole right here. All right, so I've got x plus 5 on top, x plus 5 on the bottom. That creates a hole at negative 5. So let's go ahead and type this into our calculator. Let's go to y equals to clear that. So I'm going to put in parentheses. Our original equation was parentheses x squared plus 4x minus 5 divided by x squared plus 9x plus 20. Okay, let's... Let's graph that and see what it looks like. Okay, so there's our graph. Okay, so notice we, we basically only have this one asymptote at negative 4. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4. There's that vertical, there's that vertical imaginary line. What about this hole at, at x equals negative 5? Where, where's this hole? Okay, you can't see it on the graph because we're not zoomed in enough. It's a physical break in the graph. But what you can do, guys, is if you press this zoom button, zoom, and if you scroll all the way down to the very bottom, you can actually tell your calculator, I only want to see one-fourth or one-fifth of the whole graph. I'm going to go all the way down to one-tenth. That means I only want to see one-tenth of the graph. Okay, so let me, let me go back. Zoom 6. And let's go zoom. Let's go zoom 1 tenth. Okay, so I can't necessarily see it there. So let me let me change my settings here. Let's try to do the box. Make sure you guys can see this. Alright, let's go zoom box. And I'm gonna make a little box over here at negative 5. Okay, so let's start the box there. I'm going to press enter. I'm going to scroll up and then I'm going to press over. I want to create a little box right here. Alright, let's zoom in. Okay, there. Can you see it right there, guys? There's the little gap. Right, right at negative 5, there's a literal break in the graph. There, this is a hole. Okay, there's no value. There's no x value. There's no y value. There's nothing. Because when I have negative 5, my function is undefined. So you normally you say, okay, this is an asymptote, but it's not really because it's on top and the bottom. So they cancel each other out. So it's kind of like an asymptote, but not really. Okay, so that's why we don't have this invisible line. It's just a physical break in the graph. Okay, and we'll see that again here in just a minute on another one of these problems. I think it's this next one here. So let's go ahead and look at number 5. Okay, so we got x plus 6. I want to go ahead and factor this. 
So I need to factor the denominator. There's no GCF, so I need to go ahead and, and factor this real quick. So I have, uh, let's go 2x squared plus 9x minus 18. That's factoring when a is not 1. Do the rainbow thing. 2 times negative 18 is negative 36. Factors of negative 36 add to 9. That's going to be a 12 and a negative 3. So I'm going to split this. I'll put the 12x over here, negative 3x minus 18. Let's draw our curtain. I can pull out a 2x. That will leave me with x plus 6. I can pull out a negative 3. That will leave me with x plus 6. So my two factors are x plus 6 and 2x minus 3. So if I rewrite this whole function, I've got the x plus 6 on top. And then I have this is the same thing as this. We just factored it. So I have another x plus 6 on the bottom times this 2x minus 3. And once again, guys, if you're still slow on factoring when a is not 1, you've got to be able I mean, this, these are the kinds of things you've got to be able to do this quickly. You cannot afford to sit here for several minutes and try to figure out, oh, my gosh, I forgot how to do the curtain thing. I forgot how to do the rainbow thing. That's just got to be something that's ingrained in your brain. So if you're not quick on that, if you're still rusty on that, you need to see me for tutoring. Go back and watch some of my old geometry videos that, from what we learned last year. All those videos for how to factor when A is 1, A is not 1, GCF, special cases, they're all under Chapter 12 uh, under my geometry videos. Okay. So anyway, I've got a factor on top and on bottom that cancels, so that lets me know, ding, 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 I've got a hole. i got a hole in the graph. <clears throat> okay, so our vertical asymptote, we're thinking excluded values, right, EVs. Where's my denominator zero? Well, this is why you need to factor it so we can quickly see, okay, this is what's in the denominator factor. That one I just flipped the sign. And remember, it's the equation of a line, x equals negative 6, flip that sign. This one you got to set equal to zero. 2x minus 3 equals 0. Move the 3 to the other side. 2x equals 3. So x equals 3 halves. Okay, but remember it's the equation of a line. So x equals 3 halves. Okay. Horizontal asymptotes. My top heavy, bottom heavy thing. All right, I'm bottom heavy. The highest, the degree of the highest term is higher than this guy. Okay, so when the bottom exponent is higher than the higher exponent on top, I'm bottom heavy. When I'm bottom heavy, my horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. I put bottom heavy. Okay, slant asymptote. Do, am I top heavy by more than one? No, we just said we're bottom heavy, so can't have a slant asymptote. Holes, do I have a hole? Yes, I have a hole right here. Okay, x plus six over x plus six. So my hole is at x equals negative 6. Okay, so if I were to go back and graph this one quickly, let's see if we can find it, see this hole. Parentheses x plus 6 divided by 2x squared plus 9x minus 18. Let's graph that. I'm zoomed out again, so I want to go zoom 6, zoom standard. I want to get back to my standard window. Okay, so I've got a hole at negative 6. Okay, so once again, I can't really see it. So I'm going to do a zoom box over here at negative 6. Sometimes it's, whoops. Sometimes it's hard to, sometimes it's hard to see the. Okay, enter. Now let's make a little box. Yeah, this one's going to be kind of hard to see. So zoom one tenth. Yeah, this one's going to be kind of hard. To, kind of hard to see, guys. <laughs> Let's try it. On, try it on a different one. I think there's another one where we can clearly see the gap. That one's hard to see because it's so, the graph is actually so close to the axis. It's kind of hard to see. But anyway, all right. So let's go on to the the next problem here, number six. Okay, so my vertical asymptote. So these are our excluded values. Let's go ahead and see if we can factor it. I'm going to have an x plus three, x minus three on top. That's just a difference of squares. Okay, nothing cancels, so I don't have a hole. No hole on this one. Vertical asymptote. Where's my denominator? Zero. X equals negative four. Horizontal asymptote. I'm top heavy. Okay. So when I'm top heavy, I don't have a horizontal asymptote, none. 
Okay, when I'm top heavy by more than one, this is a one here, two is one more than one. So when I'm top heavy by one, I do have a slant height. And to figure out the equation of the slant height, you've got to either do long division or synthetic division. Thank goodness our denominator, the coefficient is one and the exponent is one. So that means we can use synthetic division. We don't have to mess with long division. Okay, so I flip that sign. So I've got negative four. Okay, I put a 1 for the squared. I don't have a x term, so don't forget the placeholder. I have a 0 for the x term, and I have a negative 9 for the constant. Okay, so bring down the 1. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. 0 plus negative 4 is negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 4 is 16. 16 minus 9 is 7. But remember, we don't care about the remainder. I only care about what's left over here. Okay, so I've taken my quadratic, and I've knocked it down to a line. So the equation is that's just a 1x and then minus 4. Okay, so my slant asymptote is x equals, well, excuse me, y equals x minus 4. Okay, I can see that if I graph that. Do this real quick. Parentheses x squared minus 9 divided by parentheses x plus 4. Plus 4. Okay, let's graph that. I'm going to go back to my standard window, zoom 6. Okay, so the y-intercept is at negative 4. This is coordinate algebra stuff. So here's 1, 2, 3, 4. There's my y-intercept, and the slope is 1. So basically have a, a diagonal line going up through here, and that makes sense. Okay, so this is kind of a visual way to check and make sure you found that slant asymptote equation correctly. Okay, number 7. If I factor this... I can pull out a 5, that's going to leave me with x squared minus 25 over x squared plus 4. And then I can factor that as a difference of squares. So that will be 5 times x plus 5 times x minus 5 all over x squared plus 4. I'm sorry, y'all can't see that. Okay, so that's the difference of squares, x plus 5, x minus 5. Okay, so nothing cancels, so I have no hole. Okay, vertical asymptote. Where's my denominator? Zero. So I've got to set x squared plus 4 equal to 0. Uh-oh. x squared equals negative 4. Take the square root. I cannot take the square root of a negative. So when you have imaginary, quote-unquote, imaginary roots in the denominator, you have no vertical asymptote. Okay, can't take the square root of a negative. Horizontal. The n and the m match. These two guys are the same, and when they match, I simply, that's a 1. I simply look at is the equation of the horizontal asymptote is y equals a over b. It's just that coefficient divided by that. So that's going to be 5 over 1, or y equals 5. I don't have a slant asymptote because I'm not top heavy by 1. Okay, check that quickly. So parentheses 5x squared minus 125 divided by parentheses x squared plus 4. Let's graph that. Okay, we said there's no vertical asymptote. Okay, well I can't see what's going down here, going on down here at the bottom. So if I zoom out just a little bit, press enter, I can see my graph goes down, makes a little V. Oh, this looks perfectly symmetrical. And so I have no vertical asymptote. Okay, so that makes sense. My horizontal asymptote at y equals five. If I go back to my standard window. I should have an imaginary line. Yep, that makes sense here, right, right there, horizontal. Visible line at y equals 5, no slant asymptote, no hole. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. All right, so in these, they are asking us to find domain and range, as well as the intervals of increase and decrease. Okay, so once again, I want to factor this on top. That's the difference of squares, x plus 4, x minus 4. And on the bottom, that's factoring when a is 1. What are the factors of negative 15 to add to negative 2? That's a negative 5 and a positive 3. Yeah, negative 5 and a positive 3. Okay, so nothing cancels, so I have no hole. And the hole actually does matter for, for domain and range, guys. You don't have an x or a y coordinate at that physical empty void in the abyss in the graph. Just, just a nothing. It's just a... They're like tornadoes and hurricanes. There's all kind of stuff in that wormhole. Who knows what's in there? Okay, so domain is going to be are going to be um, all of my x values. But before I do the domain, I still need to get my asymptotes. Okay, so let's continue with what we were doing in class with laying all of these out. My vertical asymptote. 
The totes are where the denominator is 0, so that's going to be uh, x equals 5 and x equals negative 3. I'm just flipping those signs because I'm setting this equal to 0. The horizontal asymptote, top heavy, bottom heavy, they match. Okay, they match, so that's just a 1 over 1. Okay, so that's going to be y equals 1, n equals m. Okay, holes, do I have any holes? Nothing cancels, so I have no holes. Okay, so now that I have the asymptotes, now I can go find these four things. Okay, so let's graph this. I, I just I'd like to graph this stuff, guys. It's just so so easier for me, so much easier when I when I visually see what's going on here. Okay, you don't have to have a graph, but you know if you're a visual kind of student, then maybe this will help you. So parentheses x squared minus 16 divided by x squared minus 2x minus 15, close the parentheses. Whoops, do I have one too many? I think I've got one too many parentheses in there. x squared minus, okay, there we go. All right, let's graph it. Okay, so there's my vertical asymptote at negative 3. Okay, there's my vertical asymptote at 5. And here's my horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. Okay, so that makes sense. I'm feeling good about it so far. My domain, where do I have x values? Remember, you will never have an x value at, a, at an asymptote or a hole. Okay, there's literally nothing there. Because when x is negative 3, the graph is undefined. When I go second table, and I look at my table, look at what your calculator says. It, it wants to explode. It doesn't know what to do when you stick in a negative 3. It's an error. It's undefined. Same thing. At, uh, at 5, if I scroll down here, calculator doesn't know what to do. It's an error right there. Okay, so my domain, come back to the graph, is going to be negative. I always start out here at negative infinity, and I sweep from left to right like I'm reading a book. Okay, so I have x values everywhere from negative infinity. I'll have x values until I get this undefined spot at negative 3. Okay, so my domain is going to be negative infinity to that negative 3 spot. And then there's a break. Okay, I don't have an x value negative 3. Then I pick it back up again right after negative 3, and I'll continue to have x values until I hit the other asymptote at 5. So we use the little u for union. Negative 3 to 5, I have x values. I don't have an x value at 5. It's undefined right there. So there's another break. Okay, and then I will continue to have x values picking back up at 5. And as I go to pause infinity, I will continue to have x values everywhere. So from 5 to infinity. Okay, range. That's karate kit, right? Paint the fence. Paint the fence. Sweep. Wax on. Wax off. I'm painting the, the, painting the fence. I'm starting down here at negative infinity. And I'm sweeping up. This is the only one, guys, that we care about the y values. Domain, intervals of increase, decrease, all that stuff. We care about x values. I'm only looking at the y values. Okay, so do I have y values everywhere? And you might say the vertical asymptote prevents me from having y values everywhere and many times that's true okay over here that's true I don't have y values over here but if you'll notice the middle of the graph it actually does cut through y equals 1 I do have a y value in this part of the graph so in this case yes I have y values everywhere so that is going to be for this one that is going to be negative infinity to infinity. I have y values everywhere. Okay. I don't and again the whole the holes do actually make a difference here, so you gotta pay attention to that. And this one I don't have a hole, so I don't have to worry about that. Okay, uh, increase, intervals of increase and decrease. Okay. So so to me, I, I kind of think the way I explained in the class, where's my company making money or losing money? This is time. And this is money, okay? So I did this for 10 years. And my, is my company making money as time goes on? Or, oop, my company's losing money. Things are going bad. I'm, I'm losing money versus time, okay? I'm going down from left to right like you're reading a book. Well, look at our graph here. Are we making money or losing money? Okay, I'm, uh, pfft, uh, pfft. My company's going bankrupt. I'm, as I read the book from left to right, my graph is always going down, okay? So at no time, this is a beautiful company. They never make money. I want to work for that company. They never make money. They need a change in management. No intervals of increase. What about inter interval decrease? Okay, well, obviously that means we're losing money everywhere. 
But again, where I'm only looking at the x values, so at these asymptotes, nothing's happening. It's a void in the abyss, okay? So my decreasing interval is from negative, three, uh, negative infinity. My webcam to join us again. Welcome back. So my interval decrease is negative infinity until I hit this x value of negative 3. All right, union, there's a break. And it's basically, basically it's just going to be the domain. Okay, I'm still losing money from negative 3 to 5, break. Okay, pick it back up again. After 5, I will continue to lose money from 5 to infinity. Okay, all right. So remember, I only care about the x values for domain and the intervals increase and decrease. That one, the range is the only one that I care about the y values. Everything else, x values. Okay, let's try the next one. Let's factor it. So I have x cubed on top, x plus 2, x minus 2 on the bottom. So my excluded value, where's my denominator 0? That's going to be at negative 2 and 2. My horizontal asymptote, I am top heavy by 1. Okay, so when I'm top heavy by 1, I have no horizontal asymptote. I have a slant asymptote, but the slant asymptote doesn't affect uh, domain range intervals of increase and decrease. The slant asymptote just affects end behavior. It's just kind of guiding which direction is this graph headed. It's kind of like a barrier guiding it to infinity or negative infinity. Okay, so no horizontal asymptote. Uh, do I have any holes? That's important. No, because nothing cancels on the top or the bottom, so I don't have a hole that I have to worry about. Okay, so if I type this into my graph, let's go x cubed divided by parentheses x squared minus 4. Let's graph this guy. And that's a polynomial, so that means I've typed something in wrong. Did I? I type that in right. X cubed divided by x squared minus four. Yeah, I guess I did graph that right. X cubed divided by x squared minus four. Yeah, I knew I'd graph. I knew I'd type something in wrong. <laughs> There's <laughs> that was a polynomial. That was a. Definitely type something wrong. Okay, so now this becomes a little bit more complicated because now we have these turning points at the relative max and the relative min. Okay, so we, we need to find these two points after we find the asymptotes. Okay, so to find the relative max and min, we need Mr. Spidey, so that's going to be the calc button, second calc. Let's go find the minimum first, it doesn't matter. Okay, so to jump up to this part of the graph, guys, I need to press the over button. Just keep pressing over, move Mr. Spidey down, and he will jump spider webs. So there he is. Okay, I'm to the left. Press enter. Move Mr. Spidey to the right. That's good. Press enter. Press enter a third time. So I have a relative min at 3.5, 5.2. Relative min, 3.5, 5.2. Let's use Mr. Spidey to find the relative max. Let's get Mr. Spidey to keep pressing left until he jumps to the new spider web. There he is. I need to move to the left, and these left, left bound. Move it to the left of the hump. Move it to the right of the roller coaster. Press enter a third time. And it's the same thing, it's just negative. So my relative max is negative 3.5, negative 5.2. Okay, and that's going to matter. That's going to affect our intervals of increase and decrease. Okay, so my domain, where do I have x values? Okay, so I will have x values. I have x values everywhere from negative infinity. I'll have x values. I'll keep, and then even though it turns over and we start an interval decrease, I still have x values there. But I don't have an x value at this asymptote, and I don't have an x value at this asymptote. So my domain is going to be negative infinity until I hit this first asymptote and negative 2. There's a break. I will continue to have x values in the middle part of the graph. So that's negative 2 to 2. And then there's a break at the asymptote to 2. And then I will continue to have x values everywhere. So that's going to be 2 to infinity. Okay, what about the range? Do I have y values everywhere? 
Well, well once again, you, you would say, oh, I've got a break right here. We don't have, we don't have a, a horizontal asymptote. Okay, so if I don't have a horizontal asymptote, my range is going to be negative infinity to infinity. I've got y values everywhere. I, I, I should take that back. I, I need to take that back. Just because you don't have a horizontal asymptote doesn't mean you don't necessarily have a range. But in this case, you need, you need to look at your graph, and you can see we do have y values everywhere. Okay, so my range is negative infinity to infinity. Okay, intervals of increase and decrease. That's going to depend on these guys, okay? But for intervals of increase and decrease, I don't care about the y values. I'm only looking at the x values. So as I'm reading a book from negative infinity, my, my company's making money. Everything's happy. We're making money, making money, until I get to the x coordinate of that spot. So I'm making money from negative infinity to that spot, negative 3.5, and then I start losing money. Okay, so from, so there's a break. Okay, so my interval increase, I don't start making money again. From here, I'm losing money, I'm losing money, I'm losing money, I'm losing money. I don't start making money again until I hit that spot, which is the relative minimum. Okay, and that x coordinate was the positive 3.5. Okay, so for 3.5, I pick it back up and I will continue to make money until the end of time. So. 3.5 to infinity. Okay, where am I losing money? This is a little tricky. Right here at this rel relative maximum, I start losing money. I only care about the x values. So from negative 3.5, I'm losing money, but I'm not losing money at negative 2 because that's an asymptote. Nothing is happening at x is negative 2. It's undefined. Okay, it's an error breaking the graph. So I'm losing money from negative 3.5 until I hit that asymptote of negative 2. Okay. And then there's a break, all right? And where else am I losing money, okay? So I'm losing money from the relative min. I'll get Mr. Spidey again. I'm losing money from here to the asymptote. And then I start losing money again from the asymptote to what? The other asymptote. I'm still losing money. So that's negative 2 to 2, all right, break. Okay, I'm not losing money at 2. Nothing's happening at 2. That's the asymptote. Okay, So I pick it back up again, and 2, from 2, from this x value of 2, I'm losing money, losing money, until I hit that relative minimum. So I'll continue losing money from positive 2 to the x coordinate of the relative minimum, which is 3.5, and then after 3.5, we said we're making money. Okay, So I'm losing money from here to the asymptote, from the left asymptote to the right asymptote, and then from the right asymptote to the relative minimum. Okay, Why do we not use brackets on this? Why do we not include these points at the relative min and the relative max? That's a good question. I cannot be increasing and decreasing at the exact same time. So at this spot of 3 comma 5, 5.2, I can't say that I'm both increasing and decreasing at the same as that time. At that infinitesimal point, my graph is actually flat right at the turn of the roller coaster. Okay, So we don't use brackets on uh, intervals of increase and decrease. All right? Basically, the only place you're going to use brackets is on the range. You might have a bracket on the range. If your graph goes up and hits the spot, you include that y coordinate and then there's a gap. You know, you could have a bracket there. Okay, so let's keep going. Let's go on over to the second page. Second page. Okay. Come on, webcam. Come on. Oh, Kim doesn't want to cooperate. You can do it. Maybe. Really? Huh. Sorry about that, guys. Usually it just focuses right away. Doesn't want to cooperate. Hey! Welcome back, webcam. Okay, sorry about that. I wish I could cut out like different segments of my video. Not too much trouble. Probably can. I just don't have to do it. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this next problem here. So let's factor it. So I have a negative x. Again, it's negative out front. It could be on the top or the bottom or out front. doesn't matter. It's all the same thing. Over x plus 3 times x minus 3 and other difference of squares. 
nothing cancels, so I have no hole. So let's go ahead and look at our vertical asymptotes. That's where my denominator is zero, so that's going to be x equals three and x equals negative three. And my horizontal asymptote, I am bottom heavy. Two is more than one, so that's going to be y equals zero. And do I have a hole? I do not have a hole because I don't have anything that cancels on the top or the bottom. Okay, so let's go ahead and graph this. I'll put the negative x on top, divided by x squared minus 9, close the parentheses, let's graph that. And that's pretty easy. There's my asymptote at negative 3 and my asymptote at positive 3. So my domain is going to be negative infinity to the asymptote, asymptote to asymptote, and then asymptote to positive infinity. So negative infinity to negative 3, union negative 3 to 3, the two asymptotes, union, and then pick it back up at 3 to the end of time, infinity. All right, range, where do I have y values? I have y values everywhere. I do have a horizontal asymptote, which is basically the x-axis, but this graph cuts through the x-axis, so I do have y values everywhere. Okay. negative infinity to infinity. All right, intervals of increase and decrease. Where is my company making money? I'm making money, I'm making money, I'm making money, I'm making money everywhere. So if I'm making money everywhere, the interval of increase is going to be the same as the domain. I'm making money from negative infinity to the asymptote, from the asymptote to the second asymptote, from the second asymptote to infinity. Same exact thing. Remember, no brackets on this. Okay, where's my company losing money? Obviously, if I'm making money everywhere, then I'm not losing money anywhere. That's the kind of company I want. We never lose money. Never. All day long, making money hand over fist. That's the kind of company that you guys will be working for if you can pass quizzes like this. Okay. So, let's continue forward with the last couple of ones here. Okay. Okay, so in these last couple of ones, I'm going to give you a couple of these that are going to look like this on the quiz where you're going to have to put it all together. you got to give me everything. you got to give me vertical asymptote, horizontal asymptote, slant asymptote, any holes, x, y intercepts, domain, range, intervals, increase, the end behaviors, and sketch a graph. So let's put it all together. Let's start off by factoring this. The factors of negative 3 that add to negative 2. That's going to be a negative 3 and a positive 1. Okay, so nothing cancels, so I don't have a hole. So let's go ahead and start listing. I'm going to list these in the order in which they ask. Vertical asymptote, where's my denominator zero? That's going to be at, flip the sign, x equals two. My horizontal asymptote, top heavy, bottom heavy, I am top heavy by one. Okay, so when I'm top heavy by one, I do not have a horizontal asymptote. Maybe I should zoom out just a little bit. I am top heavy, no horizontal asymptote. So when I'm top heavy by one, I do have a slant asymptote, SA. And to do that, thank goodness I can use synthetic division. And I may just be nice to you guys and allow you to use synthetic division. I won't be too hard on you. I'll give you an easy one to do. So we'll switch this, uh, switch the sign there. So two, Draw my box. I don't have any zeros for placeholders. I just have one, negative two, negative three. Bring down the one. Two times one is two. Negative two plus two is zero. Two times zero is zero. Negative three, but we don't care about the remainder. So that equation, there's no constant, so it's literally it's just y equals x. That's just the, our basic parent function of a line, our linear equation. Okay, so let's, right, let me keep going before I start drawing stuff on the graph. All right, holes, we already said there, there are no holes because nothing cancels. And then let's find our, they want x and y intercepts next. Okay, x intercept is where y equals zero. Okay, so this is where you're basically, you're basically setting the numerator equals zero because you're multiplying both sides by the x minus two and that cancels. So it basically means I just need to flip these signs. So it's three and negative one, but remember they're coordinate points. So 3 comma 0 and negative 1 comma 0. My y-intercept is where x equals 0. So if I stick in a 0, 0 
minus zero, I have a negative three on top, and then zero minus two. So basically I just have negative three over negative two, which is a positive three halves. So that's gonna be zero comma three halves. Okay, and once again, if I wanted to check this, just to confirm, if I type this in, parentheses x squared minus two x minus three divided by x minus two. First of all, here's what the graph looks like. And if I go second table, and let's see where our zeros are. Okay, there's the there's the y, here are our zeros, okay. So when x is zero, y is 1.5. That's our y-intercept, zero, one and a half. And then when y equals zero, there and there, I've got an x-coordinate of negative one and three. So those are our, our, our two <clears throat> x-intercepts. So now we have enough information. Once you have your asymptotes, holes, and intercepts, we can plot stuff on the graph. Vertical asymptote at x equals two. Okay, so there's my imaginary vertical line. I have no horizontal asymptote. I have a slant asymptote at y equals x. So that means I've got a y-intercept of zero, and I'm going up one, right one, up one, right one. This is just our, our classic diagonal line. I'm just gonna go from corner to corner and draw an imaginary asymptote. So there's a slant asymptote. I don't have a hole. I've got an x-intercept at three comma zero. So let's put a dot right there. I have an x-intercept at negative one comma zero, and I have a y-intercept <laughs> zero, one and a half. Okay, so I need to see these points on your, on your graph to make sure that you're graphing it correctly. So now I can just use my calculator to get a general sketch, just making sure I'm going through those points. So the graph goes up, hits that y-intercept, and approaches the asymptote of x equals two. So my graph looks something like Something like this, just making sure I go oh, making sure I go up through those points. Okay, and then the other side, I'm really close to this asymptote. And I gotta go through that x-intercept and then approach that asymptote on that side. Okay, so now let's go get our domain. Where do I have x values? As I sweep from left, to, from left to right, from infinity to infinity, as I sweep across, I will have x values. I have x values everywhere until I hit that asymptote, and then I'll pick it back up, and I'll continue to have x values everywhere. So my domain is going to be negative infinity to the asymptote break, and then the asymptote to infinity. Okay, range, what is my range? Okay, where do I have y values? Paint the fence. I have y values everywhere. So negative infinity to infinity for my range. Okay, what is my interval of increase and decrease? Where's my company making money? Making money, making money, making money. Okay, so I will make money from negative infinity until I hit this asymptote. Remember, nothing happens at this asymptote. Negative infinity to the asymptote, break, and the asymptote to infinity. Notice, guys, a lot of times at the domain and the interval of increase, if, you're, if your graph is always making money, you're always going up from left to right, then your domain and your interval of increase should be the same. So obviously, uh, my company's not losing money anywhere. That's the kind of company I want to be a part of. I'm never losing money. My graph is never going down from left to right, so I have none. And then we got to do the end behaviors. Okay, so as x goes to infinity, what happens? And as x goes to negative infinity, what happens? Okay, so as I go from, as I approach my graph from left to right, as these x values get higher and higher and higher, my graph, my y values are headed up, 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 up. So I'm headed towards positive infinity. And then on the flip side, as my x values get lower and lower and lower, my y values are going down, 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 down. And that's why we say the slant asymptote just kind of guides the end behaviors. So my Y's are headed towards negative infinity. Okay, home stretch, guys. We can do it. We can do it. Last one. All right, this one's tricky. Hardest one for sure, for sure. So need to buckle up and really pay attention on this one. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to factor this. So on the top, that's easily factorable. That's X minus 4, X plus 3. On the bottom, I can pull out a GCF of 3. 
That will leave me with x squared plus 5x plus 6. And that easily factors as x plus 2, x plus 3. Okay, I got something that cancels on the bottom of the top. That means I'm going to have a hole. So that hole is going to play a role in a lot of stuff that we do. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and start listing what we got. Vertical asymptote, where's my denominator 0? After I pull out the GCF, that's going to be negative 2 and negative 3. However, they cancel, guys. So remember, if you have a hole, that is not counted as a vertical asymptote. Okay, so my only vertical asymptote is the x minus 2, which is the equation of a line, x equals negative 2. Because watch what happens when I graph this. x squared minus x minus 12 divided by 3x squared plus 15x plus 18. 18. Okay, so there's the graph. Okay, so there is, there is the vertical asymptote at negative 2. Okay, negative 2. Somebody wanted to get a hold of me. Sorry about that. Okay, but where where do I have a vertical asymptote? So if you were to look you were to look at this, you would say, oh well, I also have a vertical asymptote at negative three. Okay, but we don't have that. What happens at negative three? I'm going to do the zoom again. So I go zoom. Let's go one tenth. All right, there you go. That's a great one right there. You see that, guys? When you zoom in, there's a physical gap in the graph. It's not a true asymptote, but it's an actual void the abyss, okay? It's a break, break in the line. This at x equals negative 2, that is our true vertical asymptote that both sides of the graph approach, okay? <clears throat> All right, so that's a good uh, image of the whole. Okay, so I've got a vertical asymptote at negative 2. I'm going to put in parentheses x equals negative 3 is a whole. It is not a vertical asymptote. Okay, so horizontal asymptote, that's our top heavy, bottom heavy. They match, so I'm looking at the coefficients, the a over the b. Horizontal asymptote is always y equals, and it's going to be y equals one third. Does that look right? If I go back, zoom standard. Does it look like I have a horizontal asymptote? It's something less than one. It sure does. Okay, so that that looks good. Okay, what about a slant asymptote? I'm not top heavy by more than one, so there's no slant asymptote. What about the hole? Okay, I've got a hole at, we already said we have a hole at negative 3. However, guys, for domain and range, uh, you need to find the y-coordinate of the hole. Okay, and so to do that, what you're going to do is you're going to take this, you're going to take this negative 3 value, you're going to take x equals negative 3, and you're going to plug it into the simplified function after you cancel the stuff. You can't plug it in with it's still there because that gives you zero in the denominator. So of course that's going to be undefined. You're plugging it in to what's left over. Okay, so if I plug in negative 3 into that stuff, I'm going to have negative 3 minus 4 over 3 times negative 3 plus 2. Okay, that's going to be negative 7 over 3 times negative 1, which is um, uh, negative 3. Yeah. All right. And so if I just type that in my calculator, 7 divided by 3, I get 2.3. Okay. So let me recap that once again. Once you find the hole, you plug it back into the simplified factored out function after you cancel the stuff to find the y coordinate. So the y coordinate of the hole is 2.3. Okay. So I'm going to write over here, I'm going to write parentheses negative 3, comma. 2.3. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So make sure you guys are clear on that. Okay. The x intercept, where is my x intercept? That is where my numerator is equal to zero. So I've got, again, you flip these signs, you got four, negative three. But once again, I don't have an intercept at a hole. Okay. The hole is its own separate thing. Okay. So I only have an x intercept at four. So I'm going to write that as four, comma, zero. If I go back to my graph here, of course I accidentally deleted that. x squared minus x minus 12 divided by 3x squared plus 15x plus 18. If I go to my table, 
This is a way that you can verify that. If you made a mistake and you said, oh, I've got an x-intercept at negative 3, okay, look what happens. Your calculator doesn't know what to do at negative 3. That's the whole. Same thing at negative 2. So I don't have an x-intercept at negative 3. Okay, so I've got an x-intercept at 4. What about my y-intercept? Okay, that's I'm sticking in 0 everywhere I see an x. So I've got 0, 0, 0, 0. Basically, I have negative 12 over 18. Negative 12 over 18, that comes out to be uh, negative 0 0.7. Negative 12 over 18 is negative 0 0.7. So my y coordinate is 0, comma, negative 0.7. Again, going back to the table. There it is right there. When my x is 0, my y intercept is negative point. I just rounded that to 0.7. Okay, and so now we've got our asymptotes and our y x intercepts. We got our holes, so it's time to plot this stuff. This one I actually plotted from, this one actually, uh, when I printed this off, this is actually the answer key. So they've actually already um, done this one, which is good, because I want you guys to be able to see these points. So there, that guy right there, that's my hole. So I've got a hole at negative 3, comma, the 2.3. That's that guy right there. I've got a y-intercept, right? excuse me, x-intercept at 4, comma, 0. That's that guy right there. I've got my vertical asymptote at negative 2. Imagine a line. I've got a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1 third. That's this guy right here. Okay. All right. And then they've already drawn the graph for you. But you can just make sure you're passing through these critical points. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and keep going. Domain Okay, these are going to start to get tricky, guys, especially with the hole. Okay, so where do I have x values? As I sweep from negative infinity to infinity, I do have x values from negative infinity. I have x values until I hit the hole. There's nothing there. There's just a gap. Okay, so I have negative infinity until I hit the x coordinate of the hole. I only care about x values. So the x coordinate of the hole was the negative 3. Okay, then there's a break. I will continue to have x values from the hole, the x coordinate of the hole, until I hit the vertical asymptote. Okay, I don't have any x values at the hole or the asymptote. So from the hole to the asymptote, which is negative 2. All right, there's another break. All right, and then after the asymptote, I will continue to have x values everywhere. Okay, so I'll pick it back up at uh, negative 2, and I'll continue to have x values until I get to infinity. All right, for the range, okay, where do I have y values? This is going to get a little tricky. As I sweep from bottom to top, I'll have y values down here at negative infinity. I have y values until I hit the horizontal asymptote. So that's going to be negative infinity until I hit a horizontal asymptote of the one-third. Okay, I'm not putting a bracket on that because that is an asymptote. You only put brackets on the range when you have these relative max and mins. Okay, if I if I were to have something, well, I'm not I'm not gonna screw up this graph, but you know, if I have something like this and that, then these points you can include those on the range because you are catching that point and you are catching that point. Okay, but no y values on asymptotes or holes. Okay, so I have y values from negative infinity until I hit the asymptote. I'll pick it back up from the asymptote until I get to the hole. But I only care about the y values on range. So what is the y coordinate of the hole? That's that guy. So I'll stop there at the 2.3, break, and then after the void in the abyss, after the 2.3, I'll pick it up and I'll continue to have y values until I go on forever. So from 2.3 on to infinity, okay? Okay. It's a lot of stuff, guys. I know, a lot of stuff. So again, that's the y coordinate of the hole. Okay, last couple of ones here. Increase and decrease. Intervals increase and decrease. Okay, where's my company making money? Okay, my company's making money, making money, making money until I get to the hole. Making money until I get to the asymptote. Making money forever. So this is one of those cases where the interval of increase is going to be the same as the domain. Negative infinity to the x coordinate of the hole. 
x coordinate of the hole to the asymptote, break, and then asymptote to infinity. Okay, where's my company losing money? I'm not losing money anywhere. It's none. Okay, last couple ones. What's going on with the end behaviors? Okay, as x goes to infinity, as my x values are going here, where are my y values approaching? They're going up, 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 up. They just run out of steam. They can't ever get past the one-third. They will never cross over this. So my end behavior is heading towards one-third as the x's go to the right. What happens if my x values get smaller and smaller? My y values are dropping, 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 and they also approach this horizontal asymptote of one third. Okay, so whew, a lot of stuff guys, a lot of stuff, not gonna lie. That's a tough, tough lesson, but uh, if you guys can navigate through this, saddle up, I want you working for my company. That's all, that's all I have to say about that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Wish you good luck on the quiz, and we will see you on the next one.